Now, I bet you're wondering what I'm doing in a factory, and I bet you're wondering what this is. And if I said to you, where would you use 50 foot of wire like this on a motorcycle, or you could say 12 meters, you'd say in the tire beads. Well, it's not tire beads, it's for spokes, would you believe? And that's what you'd use on a Triumph. And we're at Central Wheel Components in Coles Hill, and we're going to have a look at how they make a wheel, how they dimple a rim, and how they fit the nipple. Well, this area here is where you get all the raw materials in. This is all the bare wire as it comes in, stainless and bright zinc plated, all on these massive, you can't call them cotton bobbins, but that's what they're like. Then from here, they go onto the various machines for the processing. Well, this spool of stainless steel wire, this is going into this spoke machine, which is going to generally head the spokes, like on this one just here, and cut them to length. So as it goes down, goes through the rollers, through a cropping machine, which crops them in two stages, and then it goes through, bashes the old head over, and spews it out at the end. Well, this is the finished spoke of the correct length, but no thread on it at all, and no bend on this end. It then goes onto this machine here, and it rolls a thread on this end that you can see, and then puts a bend on the other end. And these are Triumph spokes, and this is the machine that does it. Well, these are finished spokes. They've already been swaged, but they're not polished. So they're stainless steel. But you can see heat marks down there, but they've got the heads on. But they go into this machine then, which is a polishing fluid, and within it are little ceramic chips. These things here, they don't harm my hands. I've still got my fingers, as you can see, but they gently polish and bring a nice lustrous shine to these spokes. Anything for any biker to be proud of. So we'll just tip those in onto the polishing roundabout. After it's been on the polishing machine, it then comes into this, which is a bed of maize, and the maize is actually drying off the spokes. So it's still got a few chippings in there, but you actually get beautifully finished spokes, just like that, twinkling away there in the light. Beautiful, enough to make anyone proud. Having had a look all around the factory, they've got quite an operation here. And young Warren, because you are young compared with me, <laughs> Warren, it is a hell of an operation you've, you've got here. And where does the bulk of your work come from? Is it new stuff from Triumph or, or what? Well, the bulk's still predominantly from the classic bike trade. When it's, uh, people are restoring the bikes of the 60s and 70s are coming to us for, for the parts. But obviously it's very nice to have the uh, ongoing business now with the, with the current Triumph factory where we're supplying all their original equipment wheels. Yeah, so, so that's for the, uh, the Thunderbird, is it, in, in the main? Yeah. Thunderbird, uh, Tiger and Adventurer, yes. Yeah, so that's nice standard bread and butter stuff, isn't it? No matter what else is going on, you've got that. That's right, and then obviously hopefully in years to come we'll have the refurbishment work for that as well. <laughs> now tell me, you get stuff from uh, requests from all over the world, don't you? And what's the sort of furthest away that you've had? Well, we deal with Australia and New Zealand, but probably the uh, strangest we had, we had a, a chap flying from America to book, book his wheels in on a while you wait service, where we, uh, we actually, he, he landed in Manchester, um, came down by taxi to Birmingham, dropped his wheels off. Uh, we arranged to, for him to go around the corner to a local leisure centre to have a breakfast and uh, a bit of a freshen up, and he came back, picked his wheels up, finished, went back up to Manchester and flew home to America. That's an expensive set of wheels. Was he a regular customer? I mean, did he did he know of you of old or what? No, he, uh, he'd been told in the States that he was using them for racing, uh, racing of classic bikes, and he was told there was only one place to go if he wanted the wheels built properly, and uh, he took the advice and came over here. Oh, great. And he was, uh, he was pleased with it, I presume. Has he come back? <laughs> well, not that <laughs> since, which is uh, good in one respect, because it means he's had no problems. So. Yeah. Well, tell me, seeing all these wheels here, all the old spoke technology, as he were, did you see a dip off in trade in the early 70s when alloy wheels came on board? And uh, at that stage the company was very very small, it was really sort of a, a one man band um, so there was always plenty of work to keep my father busy. Uh, busy. Um, it's only really the last 10 years that we've accelerated to the levels that we are now uh, where obviously we're, we're supplying all the other wheel builders in this country as well with the products. 
Yeah, so you've managed to sort of balance the, uh, the sort of market demand. So your production is a nice position to be in that, isn't it? Well, yeah, it's a little niche, really. We, um, we were never big enough to be a major uh, force in the supply of rims, um, but um, we filled in that little gap there where we're not too, sw too small to supply all the wholesalers. Yeah. So you touched on this being your father. It's been a, f uh, a family firm, hasn't it? It started 1900-ish, was it? Yeah, just before 1900. We've got some records from 1897 of uh, my great 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 grandfather dealing with Dunlop in those days. Yeah. So they were in the wooden wheels as well, I presume people I would have been would making have them. So then, yes. The wooden spokes. Yep. Yep. No wooden spokes now. No. Please say. <laughs> well here's the finished spokes. Have a, a handful of nipples to go with the spokes. Nicely plated. These are the ones that are actually plated on brass to stop corrosion. Beautifully finished alloy hub. And here we have the light alloy rim. And from these four components, this is where we go with the completed wheel. Well, this is a, a laced wheel, but just loosely assembled. You can see the nipples popping through there. So all the spokes are in, all in the right order, all assembled, ready to go. And then it goes over onto the table over here, where it's pre-tensioned then, before it goes onto truing. Well, after the wheel, has, the spokes have been pre-tensioned, it's then put onto this little machine, where it's then actually trued up. So this is with the hands-on bit, where each nipple is just given that little tweak and using a dial gauge, to make sure it gets absolutely smack on true. The rim itself has to be centered on the hub. And so that's got a, a six millimeter um, dimension on either side. And then there's a tolerance to it as well, which is within one millimeter to make sure there's no wobbles in the rim. And it's got to be not only has it got to be side to side smack on, but it's got to be smack on up and down as well. So uh, you've got to keep a constant radius, which is why these two wheels are here, either side. They're measuring the uh, radius and the run out side to side. Warren, you were saying uh, earlier that you refurbish classic wheels and veteran wheels, vintage and all the rest of it. And so what sort of condition is a typical condition that you get a wheel in? Well, as you can see, we've got one here that's come in. Uh, this is off a of Norton. Yeah. It's coming in this condition. It's obviously 30 odd years old. We'll take it, we'll strip the wheel out, send the hub off and have it blasted and powder coated and bring it back into this sort of condition. We then decide what rim the customer wants, we check it out. Uh, if it's an English chrome rim, you've already seen the process where we, we have a mild steel rim and we dimple it, put the holes in it to fit the, the rim, to fit the hub, sorry, and uh, then build it up. Uh, if it's an aluminium rim, we pull one down off the shelf, already dimpled, same again, put the holes in, and then bring it and assemble it. Now, do the dimples, I know the punching is peculiar to that particular wheel, isn't it? Is that right to get the spoke angle? That's right. But what about the dimpling? Does that tend to be pretty standard? Have you got more tolerance in the dimple? The, <laughs> the dimpling's pretty standard. Uh, yeah. There are some uh, strange configurations where there's a 2x2 two two or 3x1 dimple. Yeah. But uh, by and large, the standard w one left, one right is the is a standard dimple. And then it just depends on how big the hub is and the dimensions of the rim to get the angles right for um, punching the holes through. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Okay. And as you can see, the finished uh, finished wheel, gone from a rusty has-been to uh, ready to go back on the bike, even a bit of paintwork done on the rim. all from Central Wheel, so our wheelie must be gone, but we'll be back next week, and I've had enough now for dimples and nipples and all that sort of thing, so I'm off.